So you just bought a whole bunch of brand new PC hardware and you want to impress your friends with how badass your gaming rig looks. I guess you can't really buy GPUs right now. So you're going to a LAN party and you want to make sure that everybody stops and stares at your system as they walk by. I guess we're not really doing LAN parties. You're going to be editing a lot of videos and putting a lot of stress on that brand new Ryzen 5000 series processor. And you want to make sure that your temperatures stay under control and are monitored effectively. I guess you can't really get one of those either. All right, so you have a PC that's a couple years old and you want to make it look cooler. We could do that. Need a Windows or Office key but don't want to pay retail? MMORC.com has all the best deals and a sweet discount for BPS Customs viewers. Just head over to the site link below and enter code BAN35 for 35% off your order total, meaning you could snag Windows 10 Home for under 10 bucks. Fill out your email and place your order and then click the extract code button at the top of the page. From there, it's as easy as heading to your Windows activation settings and inputting your shiny new key. For more information, head to MMORC.com or check out the links below. If you guys like this kind of tutorial content and or want to see more PC instructional videos, build videos, how to's, gaming stuff, make sure you get subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Also consider following me on Twitter at BPS underscore customs. I post a lot of really dumb stuff there. So if you're into that, uh, I guess I'm your man. Now, this is not generally where I film my videos from this. If you guys are familiar is where I live stream from. It's also my editing PC. But the reason that we are filming here today is because you guys made it extremely clear that you wanted to know how I set up the awesome sensor panel in the ultimate overkill cyberpunk 2077 PC that I built a few weeks ago on the channel, which you could find a link to right up there. Configuring that sensor panel is mostly an exercise in utilizing Ida 64's built-in features. And in order to show you guys how to do that, I needed to sit at my PC so I could demonstrate exactly how I went about setting up that panel and how you guys could do the same thing. One of the reasons that I was actually hesitant to make this video is because not only are there quite a few tutorials out there on the internet as far as how to set up an Ida 64 sensor panel, but also Jay and Phil had actually just done a really good one, which I will link to down below in the video description. I figured that there wasn't exactly a need for another one of these how to set up a sensor panel type videos, but you guys were very adamant that you wanted to know exactly how I made the specific one that I did. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that, but also kind of guide you along the way if you want to make any kind of changes or improvements to make it more custom to exactly what your setup needs. First, before we start configuring anything, you will need one piece of hardware aside from your PC in order to make this work. And that is the panel itself. Now, this is actually the exact same panel that I put in the build. I have two of them. I'm using this for something else, actually but you don't need this specific one. These come in a variety of sizes and feature sets, and you can buy them anywhere from probably $30 all the way up to 80, 90, $100. This one is a little bit nicer. It's a touchscreen. It's got some speakers on it. It's larger, it's seven inches. Uh, it's also got some control buttons on the back. And this one was about $80. I'm gonna link this one, this very specific one down below in the video description in case you wanna replicate exactly what I've done with my setup here. Just keep in mind, there are a few things that you want to make sure that you know when you are buying these panels. The first thing to know, obviously, is the size. Because this is one of the larger panels, I had to make sure that it fit in the case that I was building in. And I did measure it out ahead of time, and I have the Lian Li PCO11 Dynamic XL, which has a good amount of room along the back wall for something like this. But smaller cases or cases with different layouts likely won't have the room for something like this, and you'll have to go with something smaller, four, five, or six inches. The second thing to keep in mind is resolution of the screen that you are going to be using using. This one is 1024 by 600, or if I hold it like I'm holding it right now, 600 by 1024. And the smaller panels are likely going to have lesser resolutions. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to look worse because if they're smaller, less resolution will actually probably look fine, but you will be able to put less information on the panel as it is set up in your PC. The third thing to keep in mind is what the back of the PCB looks like and what the mounting situation is going to be inside of your particular enclosure. 
One of the reasons that I got this panel is because it has four standoffs. Now, typically that's supposed to be used for mounting a Raspberry Pi directly to this screen. But as it, it turns out, these standoffs line up exactly with the ventilation holes in the back of the PC-011 Dynamic XL. So I was just able to stick a few screws through the ventilation holes and directly into the back of this PCB into the standoffs and hold it firmly in place. Now, you don't necessarily need a super sturdy way to mount these. There's gonna be no pressure on them. They're not gonna move around. So as long as it's in place and not moving, it should be fine. That means that you can mount these with things like double-sided tape if you want, or screws or hot glue, or anything else that you might wanna use to secure this to your case. A lot of these screens also come with these mounting tabs at each corner. You can actually cut them off. There's no traces running through the PCB in this area, but it is yet another way to mount it if you want. And the fourth thing to consider is connectivity. These panels come in a variety of different connection options. This one requires a full-size HDMI along with power via micro USB. There are screens out there that are set up to just work with the Raspberry Pi and connect via a ribbon cable, and as such, they don't have a video in. This would make it extremely difficult to use it as a sensor panel inside your PC without being able to get video to it. So when it comes to your screen, make sure you know the size, the mounting options, the connectivity and the resolution. Once the sensor panel screen is mounted inside the case, you'll need to make sure that it's both powered and has video signal. Some screens are lower power and can actually function only off of the phantom power that's coming over the HDMI cable itself. So all you need to do is route an HDMI cable out of the case and then back around and connect to a secondary output on your graphics card. This will both power the screen and give it the signal that it needs. Some screens like this one actually require an auxiliary power because they're larger and have more features. So you will need to find a way to power them. This screen comes with all the cables necessary that you might need, including a couple of different ways to both put signal to it and to provide power to it. But typically what you'll need to do is find either an external USB or maybe purchase a cable that's two or three dollars that can connect micro usb to internal pc usb 2.0 header again i will link to some other cables and accessories that you might need down below in the video description just keep in mind i would recommend trying to get the thinnest and most flexible cables that you can, and also the shortest runs that are necessary to make sure that you're all set up but don't have a lot of extra cable slack inside of the case. You wanna make sure this is as neat of a setup as possible. In the PC-011 Dynamic XL, I was able to very easily route my cables out through the IO covers and then back around to the back of the case. I have the micro USB connected to the back of the motherboard for power and I have an HDMI signal coming from my graphics card. Now that we have the sensor panel mounted physically inside of the case, we wanna make sure that it's set up properly inside of Windows so that we can just move our sensor panel over to it once we finish it up in IDA64. And the way we do that is right click on the desktop, go down to display settings, and then you can see the initial display shows you what uh, screens you have connected to the PC currently. So this is your primary output, the, your monitor. And then number two, much smaller, is the sensor panel. You wanna click on that and then scroll down. And down here, you'll see the actual information on the display itself. You wanna make sure that multiple displays is selected to extend these displays. This will allow you to click and drag things across. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your orientation and the resolution are set correctly. My sensor panel is set up so that it is installed in the case in portrait mode, so that it is taller than it is wide. And it's also right side up. I mounted the bottom of the, of the panel to the bottom of the case. But it's okay if you had to mount yours upside down for reasons of cable routing or connectivity or neatness, you can easily flip it here. So even if you plug it in and it looks upside down and backwards, you can flip it and or rotate it within these settings very easily. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that the taskbar is not showing on the secondary display. So in order to do that, go down to the taskbar, right click and go to taskbar settings. It'll open up another settings window. And then there's a toggle at the bottom for multiple displays and show taskbar on all displays. And just click that to off and the taskbar will not show on the secondary display. 
Okay, now it's time to get into IDA64 and configuring the sensor panel itself. You can see right here, this is the sensor panel that I have and that I use on this PC. I was able to easily drag it over from the other display onto my main display, and this is the same process for putting it back there when we're all done. So you'll just click on it and you can drag it over and it'll go off the screen onto your little sensor panel inside of your PC. Now, this is the final product, but we have to know, first of all, how to enable this and then how to load these assets and make sure that it's reading the correct information. So in IDA64, go to File and Preferences. And then once the Preferences window pops up, down here underneath LCD, there is a Sensor Panel. You want to click the box that says Show Sensor Panel. And you probably also want to set your panel size correctly at this time. You don't have to do that right now, but setting it to the correct size right now will allow you to move things around and position them the way you want. And so you're going to know exactly how it's gonna look once you actually move this over to the little screen inside your PC. So the screen that we're using, the one that I have is a 600 by 1024. So just set the sensor panel size at 600 by 1024. If this was set in landscape, again, it would be the opposite, 1024 by 600, and then you hit OK. Now, the biggest differentiating factor between a lot of the sensor panels that are out there right now and the one that you're seeing on my screen currently is this. These gauges are custom gauges. Now, I did not make these myself. And the way that you can actually find a lot of information on sensor panels, including custom gauges, custom layouts, borders, uh, ideas for how to configure yours, is on the IDA64 forums. There is a ton of information on here from people that have built their own sensor panels and they're even sharing both their assets and their configuration files for you to just import and use on your own. You can see that this is a cyberpunk themed one. This is, I guess, an anime themed or something. But basically any theme that you guys want, you could probably find here. But I would definitely say you want to make it your own once you import some of the assets that you're finding. So for instance, this sensor panel right here, it looks pretty cool, but it uses all stock assets. So this gauge is what you're actually going to find when you load a regular gauge into IDA64. Whereas my gauges look like this. Now, if you guys want to know how to make a custom gauge, I'm gonna leave a link down below to an excellent video by Ali Oxen that I'm showing on the screen right now. Ali did a great tutorial on how to make your own custom gauge, the steps that you'll need, the assets that you'll need, and even shows a full time lapse of how he made his own custom gauge to fit his needs on his sensor panel. Spoiler alert, it is pretty tedious. However, it is worth it in the end because you'll have something that nobody else has. If you do not want to make your own custom gauge and you just really like the way that my sensor panel looks with these gauges, I'm going to leave a link to a Dropbox down below where you could pull down all of the assets that I have used in order to make this sensor panel. That includes the custom gauges, the border, the layout, the fonts, and also the little JPEGs that I've used here. If you want to just import my settings as is, and you have the same size panel with the same resolution, you can very easily do that. Once you have your sensor panel pulled up, you go to sensor panel manager and you hit import, and then you can choose a sensor panel file and import it. And as long as you have all of those assets, it will actually just build you this exactly the way I have it here. But you wanna build your own. So you have a blank sensor panel like this one right here, and you need to know how to start from scratch. Well, it is tedious. You have to add every asset and every PNG and every border and every little sensor individually, including labeling texts. So in order to do that, you right click, you go to your sensor panel manager, and these are all the assets that I had loaded. I've just hidden them. You go to the new button. Now, this is where you can add all of either the sensors or the graphics or the texts or the borders or backgrounds for everything on the sensor panel that you might need. And you can see there is quite a lot of stuff. So like most people want to do, you start out wanting to know what the temperatures of your main components are. So you will need to scroll all the way down here until you find the header for temperatures. 
and there it is. So the temperatures that you could choose to display include the motherboard, the CPU in different places, uh, the GPUs, your memory, uh, your storage, everything like that. So we wanna measure our CPU temperature. Once you have found the particular sensor that you want to add, you have to choose how you wanna display it. So a simple sensor item will just show you the, the temperature in a number, or you can do a graph or a gauge. Let's do a gauge. So these are our standard gauges. This is what comes with IDA64. There are a couple of different ones. There's white in reverse, there's black, there's black in reverse, uh, and then there's custom. So this is where you would add your own custom gauge if you had made one through the video that I got and linked you guys to. But let's just say we wanna add a black regular gauge. So we can make it small, we can make it medium, or we can make it large and then we could change the values. So this is measuring temperature. If you want the temperature to measure above 100, you could certainly do that. I hope your CPU is not running over 100, but if it is, then you could change that here. You could also choose to show the value or not show the value. So here, it will show you what a number as far as what your CPU is actually reading, or you don't have to have that if you don't want, you could just have the gauge. So if we have show value, and then we wanna make sure that it's visible, so we might make the text, let's say 20, and then we wanna change the text to uh, Chosen's. So that's a nice, like, I don't know, cyberpunky kind of theme. Uh, you could choose it, maybe make it bold and the color, uh, let's make it yellow. How about that? So now we have a gauge with a temperature inside of it. And also it's, uh, it's uh, scales from zero up to a hundred, depending on what the actual, uh, um, uh, the actual value is. You can also choose to show the icon down here or not. This is a little thermometer. I don't like that. Uh, and then once you're all configured, you can just hit OK and it will add it here. Now you can move it with these little arrow buttons and you could choose it the increments in five pixels or 10 pixels or 20 pixels. Or the way which is much easier is actually to close this and then right click and hit move and then you could just place it wherever on the sensor panel you want. So place it here, and then we move on to the next thing that we wanna add. So we go back to the sensor panel manager. We're gonna hit new, and we want to add a label to whatever, to, to what this is, to what this gauge is. And we wanna make the text size 15, and we want the label to be CPU temp or whatever you want it to be, right? Uh, and then you hit okay. You'll see it pop up here, CPU temp. And then again, you're gonna have to move it either with the arrows or you can grab it and drag it down here. So now we have CPU temperature with the gauge. And then we move on to the next thing that we're adding. Sensor panel manager, new. Let's add um, our CPU utilization as a graph. So we wanna make it a line graph, uh, or we can make it an area graph or a histogram. Um, I, I like actually the area graph, the line graph and the area graph are basically the same thing, except the area graph fills in the area underneath. Uh, for our case, you wanna make sure that the width is gonna fill out a lot of this. So we have a width of 600, so I mean, you can make this 400. Uh, and then you can adjust everything within here to fit whatever parameters you want. So uh, you want to show the scale, you want to show the background frame, grid, etc., cetera, uh, and it's all selectable. I, the way I like to uh, configure these and the way I did it in my cyberpunk themed uh, sensor panel was actually to eliminate the background, keep the frame, eliminate the grid, and then change the frame to like a purple. And then you have the graph color be, you know, whatever the graph color you want you could change the font on the display. So before we mess around with anything, let's just see how this looks. So we have a graph here that's going to now fill in as as the uh, as the as we have more load on the CPU. Right now there's not much load, so it's not really showing you, but if you want to see what the actual percentage is, you can then add a simple sensor item for CPU utilization, um, we'll make this uh, we'll make this yellow again. Okay. I don't like to show the label. This way, it will just show 
the percentage. And then here it is. So the CPU utilization is at 3% right now. You can take this and you can like move it in here. As you have higher and higher CPU utilization, you'll see this graph start to fill in. And if you want, you could actually start this so that it scales differently uh, and that you it, it fills in more or looks different, however you want it to appear on your sensor panel readout. So now we go back to our sensor panel. We add a new item. Now let's say that we also want to add our CPU clock. So we go through the same process. However, you want to display it, a graph, a gauge. Again, we'll do another graph, CPU clock, an area graph 400. Uh, I'm gonna add it with the background and the grid to show you what it looks like instead of having it like this. Uh, we'll, we'll make this graph, um, I don't know, red. And then the grid will make blue, I guess. And um, okay. So now we'll have another grid. I'm gonna have another uh, another graph up there. And that's how it looks with the background applied and the grid. Now, I don't prefer it this way. I kind of prefer it this way, but whichever is, whatever tickles your fancy, then go for it. And typically this will auto scale. Well, how about that auto scale? So you're gonna see that these numbers are gonna scale appropriately for the potential speed of your CPU. So this is the way uh, a hist uh, an area graph looks with a, kind of a fill in underneath, uh, but you can see that you have a grid here and you have a background instead of a see-through. So this process takes a long time. You could also add things like uh, static images. So you could, that's how you add like the PNGs for labels. You could add things like uh, your system uptime, your power consumption. If you scroll all the way down here, there's uh, there's power values, uh, and your voltages, your fan speeds. There is so much that you could play around with and I can't go through it all. But if you wanna make your own sensor panel, it's probably gonna take you, I don't know, a long time, hours. It took me probably four or five hours to make my sensor panel. And uh, it came out looking great, but at the end of that time, you just never wanna look at a computer again because this is so tedious. A way to avoid that is, again, to go through and go to something like this site, the IDA64 site, where people are sharing their sensor panels and you can get an idea and then maybe take theirs and modify it, but keep a lot of the core elements. Or you can simply just use the panel that I've linked to down below in a video description, because once you import it, it will actually just be exactly the same. So let me show you. So we're gonna import my sensor panel. We're gonna override our settings and then boom, here is our sensor panel. So that's basically it. There is a lot of information out there on how to do this. So if I missed something, please feel free to Google other people's videos. Jay and Phil went in depth as far as how to configure things in different gauges and how they did their layout. And again, if you want some ideas, go to the Ida64 forums and there are people there that are more than willing to help out. The most important thing to just keep in mind is that you want to blend into your system aesthetic and add to it. You don't want it to detract from what else you have going on here. So you don't want to contrast the colors. You want to kind of stay on theme if you have one. The way that I built that particular sensor panel was to go along with the cyberpunk kind of look and theme. So I used borders that were kind of cyberpunk-esque. I used the gauges that were from somebody else that kind of tie in. And I think it really came out well and sets off the whole like backside of the case. I think it looks great and it provides me a lot of really relevant information at a glance. So it's dual purpose, it's functional and it's aesthetic and that's really what you want here. But it is gonna take you a lot of time to add things that you want to configure it, move things around. And I'm not an expert by any means. All I did was trial and error make sure that I have everything that I need and then move forward and add little things here, a sensor here, a little JPEG or, or PNG here, a graph here, a label here. And I ended up with what you guys can see. But for all of those of you asking how I did exactly that sensor panel, the one that's right there, 
All you need to do is have the same LCD panel, which I'll link to down below, and then download my configuration file and all my assets, which again, will be linked down below, and then hit import and you're all set. You're gonna skip a ton of time and frustration in order to get the same result that I did. But just keep in mind, it'll be somebody else's work. So if you could live with that, which you probably can, then that's fine. But I know a lot of people wanna be individuals and wanna be a little bit different. So feel free to play around with it and make it your own. I hope this was helpful for some people or a lot of people who were asking me how exactly I did that sensor panel. And I wanna see what you guys have done. So make sure to link me on Twitter to your systems or send me a photo or something like that. Uh, I'd be curious to see what you guys figure out. And if you do any custom gauges on your own, I'd be especially uh, curious to see those because I, again, I did not do mine. So thank you so much for watching guys. Uh, I know that there are a lot of you out there who wanna know about the giveaway that I was running this past week. It ends today uh, around the time that this video is going up. The winners are gonna be drawn early next week and then I'll make the announcement on Twitter and send out the emails. Do not message me or tweet at me or comment down below about asking me if you won the giveaway. If you didn't get an email, you didn't win the giveaway. But most likely, I haven't chosen the winners yet because when I do, you guys will know about it. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope it taught you something. I don't know, uh, but good luck with your sensor panels and uh, I will catch you guys next week for a really cool build video.